This is the 45 degree cutter that I use to put the chamfer on here and that's become one of my favorite cutters. Gives a nice finish too. I took the base to the big belt sander, the Rockwell 6x48 and uh, cleaned that up. The uh, layout die can be, re be removed with brake cleaner or the uh, number 138 uh, die thinner. And then I'm going to take a file, break all the corners. I might take this and push it up against the belt sander. See how that works. Take off the scratches, the layout lines, and, and the uh, bluing, redding, layout die all at one time. All in one fell swoop. And yes, you were right. This is uh, Nikola Tesla. The father of modern electricity, the man who developed three-phase power and advocated AC, went head-to-head -head with Edison, who was stuck on DC, and uh, is invented really the uh, theories for three-phase motors and the three-phase system and the system of uh, transmitting electricity over long distances. Read up on them if you have not. Uh, Nikola Tesla. What a genius. Old Tubal Cain is not a big fan of polishing things. I don't spend a lot of time making things shiny, but I did take the bluing off the die and uh, ran the sides up against the big belt sander. Then I uh, thoroughly cleaned it with uh, brake fluid, blew it out, used genuine bounty towels I don't know where you live, different parts of the world, but in uh, the U.S., Bounty brand towels are like the premier brand, and and uh, I, I think they are about the best, actually, or certainly right up there, but my brother insists on using them and carries two rolls in his car. All right. You must absolutely clean everything thoroughly before you assemble it and oil it before you assemble it. Don't put dry parts together. And when I worked at Caterpillar in the department where they assembled the fuel injectors for the power stroke engines, the uh, extraordinary effort and uh, process for cleaning these parts before they went uh, into the assembly area, and robots did all of that. But uh, there was no uh, allowance for any kind of dirt or grit in there. so. And then there was even a class that they offered. It was called cleanliness. And I thought it was about cleaning your hands and all of that. But it was about uh, cleaning. And then they would take samples of these parts that had been run through the washers and uh, agitate them and so on. And then we looked at them through microscopes to see what tiny parts were left in there. And it, that was really amazing. All right. I'm going to start putting this together. Now, th this little bearing here will move back and forth. And it's necessary for me to move it back and out of the way in order to get the uh, uh, connecting rod over that pin. And I, when you make your own, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. So together it goes. And uh, also I have to assemble this before I put it on the base so that the flywheel can fit in there. And I put a flat spot on the crankshaft for this set screw. And uh, here I go. I like to keep all my parts together, and this is a, a can of uh, cat food that I, I fed to Smokey. Remember Smokey? He's not mine, he's the neighbor's, but I was feeling generous that day. I'm using 3-in-1 oil to assemble this. It's just the perfect uh, weight of oil, plus I love the smell of it. It reminds me of my childhood. Now, this is what I was talking about. It's difficult to get the connecting route over that pin. Now, I made the pin a little longer. I should trim it, but I'm not in the mood. But I, I bent that out. Now I'm able to get that on. But without doing that, and I got just a little bit of a bend to that, without, uh, without moving this bearing in and out, I wasn't able to get it over. So now I'll move the bearing back in place, which I have pre-marked. Tighten that screw for good. And I've oiled the piston as well.
and we'll continue the assembly. Pay no mind to this hole. That's left from another project. That's the spacer. This is the eccentric. But of course, it probably wouldn't matter much if you swapped the two. Doesn't matter which uh, in and out. But what I'm doing here before I tighten the set screw that holds the bearing in, I'm determining the final position here. Because I can slide that in and out like that. So that the uh, strap here is parallel to the base, then I'll tighten that up and that's my final position. And I'm not tightening the the uh, set screw on the eccentric yet because remember that's going to determine my timing. And you know what? I'm going to turn the compressor on here because I anticipate that within 15 minutes I'll be running this thing. And will it run? They always run. But uh, one of the most important things I have not told you yet you will be ruining parts and sometimes major parts when you're working on something like this and here's the procedure when you uh, ruin something that you spent a lot of time on immediately wash your hands turn off the lights go upstairs and sit in your easy chair and pout for a while and contemplate the thing and then tackle it again the next day but don't continue when you're discouraged and angry Feel free to use these little spacer washers. These are fiber, but I guess you could use steel. I'm rather partial to these. And I did install one right between the flywheel and the eccentric that would give me just the right spacing as far as the location of the flywheel within the well. Now another point of order here is that uh, I told you I put a flat spot on the shaft and uh, that serves two purposes. Two purposes. One is that uh, allows you a good surface for the uh, set screw to bind against. Some people call these binding screws or grub screws. You guys over in the UK a lot of times call them grub screws. I like that name. Anyway, uh, tighten it up against the flat and, and it isn't going to tear anything up. And the other thing is if you don't use a flat and you tighten your grub down repeatedly, sometimes it raises a, a burr on the shaft and you can't get things apart. I think we've all suffered from that. So uh, I'm trying to give you a few little details here that uh, may be helpful and uh, of interest to you. Now remember a long time ago I said that I'm going to put the mounting screws in from the bottom rather than the top like in the other model and again the purpose for that is I suffered greatly in trying to assemble it to get those screws in there so you know you learn by making these models but the trouble is at my age I forget a lot of what I learned so I'm gonna mount that to the base next guess what after all that talk about spacing washers and so on uh, I had to take that washer back out of there and then uh, without it, I have really the perfect spacing here so that the distance on this side is pretty much the same as this side. And if I had it to do over, I'd probably make that slot a little wider. Another thing that I would do or change if I was making another, and I'm sure I will, is that there's an interference between this screw hole and the steam port. So I had to cut this screw off real short in order to not block that passage. So I believe that is why I oriented the head in that manner on the original. But then of course, like I said, I, I forgot. And I thought, oh, I'll go just for a variety that way. Well, it came back to haunt me, but yet it's not uh, debilitating in any mean, for, by any means for this, this little project. So, uh, virtually done now, except for timing it. Little oil on all moving parts. I got a little uh, tiny oiler. I got to look for that and see if I still got it. It's easy to oil uh, the valve from here or from the bottom. It's also easy to uh, oil the piston from the bottom. And another thing that you can do when, just before you run, put a little bit of oil into the inlet and that will distribute it just exactly where it needs to be distributed. In fact, in big steam engines, they used to use uh, oil, I think, all the time. And I believe they used lanolin oil, if I remember right, uh, in uh, steam engines. I'm talking about 100 years ago. 
There's a few of the products I used while I was building. Just a few of them. I like to have a nice inventory. Or as you guys say in the UK, a nice inventory. I like the way you guys talk. I also like a nice clean surface plate and uh, this is brake fluid and you know I, I like my brake fluid. I, you know I said brake fluid, brake cleaner. Earlier in the video I know when I was editing it that I, I said brake fluid. It's not brake fluid, it's brake cleaner. Let's talk about timing the valve. Now here's a good place to start for timing it. Put your uh, crankshaft here at top dead center, like that, or you could say 12 o'clock. And then notice that uh, by loosening up the set screw here on the eccentric, watch the valve up here. Can you see it moving? And it should be uh, exhausting and just getting ready to, to get charged with steam and I like to run them clockwise facing the flywheel. So I'm going to lock that right about here for an initial setting. See where that valve is? Now your valve may not stick up. And we see if it runs and then if it doesn't run well or fast enough I come back and I rotate it you know a few degrees one way or the other until I finally find the sweet spot. So let's hook up the air now. Remember I changed this to 3 16 uh, tubing here so that my steam, my genuine steam pipe will fit on that but this is just the vinyl tubing. You can't run steam through that. This, this is just compressed air. And most of you won't have a boiler. I've got to tighten that a little better. This is how I handle my air. The air is coming in down here on the coupling and there's a valve right here so I just have the valve turned off right now and then there's a gauge of course on the top and uh, the regulators and I'm just going to start it out at about five pounds. It shouldn't take any more than that. Now if you need 10 or 20 pounds then you got tight spots and binding or something is wrong because it shouldn't take much. Anyone want to take bets on whether or not it'll work first time? And I haven't tried it yet, but like I say, they always work, and uh, I'm keeping a little bit of suspense here. But uh, I told the story in another video one time about somebody that worked at General Motors, <clears throat> where they were assembling the Chevrolet 283V motors. And uh, he worked in the area where they hooked up the... Uh, they took them off the line, they hooked up temporary gasoline, filled them with oil, temporary... Uh, uh, antifreeze or water in them or whatever, wired them up and started them up and ran them for a while. Every engine got ran and he said and all the time he worked in that department he never witnessed an engine that failed to start the first time because they did everything correct all the way along the line. Here we go. Enough talk. You see it jerk a little bit. I turned the air on now you always have to spin engines over, uh, steam engines. Remember this is only single acting and I like them to run clockwise. You can make, you know, time them so they run either way. There she goes. That's uh, five pounds. You can see I got to adjust it just a little bit. It's out of time just a little bit, so I'm going to adjust it one way or the other and try it again. But it's going to run. Actually, the whole problem was that my <laughs> compressor bled down and I had no air left. It just leaks like crazy. I didn't want it on because it makes so much racket. But this is uh, three and a half or four pounds of pressure. But then I lost my, my uh, timing because I was fiddling around with the timing and that wasn't where the problem was, so I had it. I'm back to about where it was for my initial setting. And it runs nice and fairly smooth. You're always going to have some vibration. I didn't mention this, but you want the piston to be as lightweight as possible, and if it was possible to hollow it out, and, and uh, if you had a counterweight here. But I've played around with that type of uh, 
uh, of a problem before and the uh, results are always inconclusive so you don't really know if you helped or you didn't so I, I don't mess with that anymore but it's going to vibrate like crazy when I and walk off the bench when I turn it way up and now I'm at eight pounds and it's booking. When I used to take these engines to school, the kids that show the class, they didn't want to see it run slow. Mr. Peterson, how fast will it go? That was always the question. How fast will it go? You know, kids like speed. I suppose I did too, but it, I can feel it vibrating. I'll slow it back down. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I do. Tremendous pleasure in this. And don't ask me how many horsepower. Somebody always asks me that. I think you'd have to measure it in ergs. Wasn't an erg some kind of unit of measurement? And but this was probably fictitious. The the amount of. Uh, of energy it took for a fly to do a push-up. Isn't that what an erg is? E-R-G? Uh, you know, it's 50 years since I had physics. This is the other engine, not the one I just finished. And I had to change the tubing back to that eighth inch size. That's about five pounds of pressure. You know, that can of oil is so old that I still use the cap. I already lost it, but there's a cap for that. I bet that goes back. If I ever see something like that at a garage sale, I would buy it if it's at least half full. But I like this kind of oiler as well for uh, getting into the tiny little parts. And uh, this one's kind of clogged. i, I got to see if I can get those on the internet. Another thing that I forgot to tell you, or sometimes I forget if I told you or not, because I'm filming this over several days, you know. Turn that off. Make sure that you have just a little bit of end play. You got it too tight, you got it clamped, and it's, uh, it's not going to run very well. So, looking at uh, this one again, let me put it at uh, 12 o'clock high, as far as the timing is concerned. I'm at 12 o'clock high, and uh, by the way, oh, there goes the compressor. i got to wait till that goes off. Actually, a little earlier, the entire problem was the fact that I ran out of air. And uh, Okay. Let me show you something here. This was in the latest uh, issue of Home Shop Machinist, January, February 2015. These uh, two pictures here, that's the same engine, but that was built by a man by the name of Ernie Noah. And he's over from Monticello, and he frequently uh, uh, ha uh, contacts me. And he runs a, a railroad uh, outfit over there where they do model trains. Uh, little steam-powered ones, I mean. So i got to get over there sometime, but he's really quite a builder. And he's got uh, a YouTube video showing that thing running. So take a look at that. You might like it. That's a lot more intricate. I'm trying to keep this simple. I like an engine that I can make in a few days, and uh, it doesn't interfere with the other things I'm doing, but I, you know my engines are plain Janes compared to what Ernie just did there. Uh, but I do like a beam engine. I've never built a beam engine. I would like to. Getting back to the timing, here's another way of kind of double checking to, to see if you're in the ballpark. And uh, I've got pressure to this right now, even though it's not running and it's five pounds. At 12 o'clock high, of course it's top dead center, it's not going to run. But when I move it just to, uh, well, what is that, 11 o'clock, 11.30 or something like that, it should take off if you've got it timed right. You see what I mean? And if you want it to run in the other direction, you do time it so it would be over here. And you can make this with a reversing valve if you wanted to go to the extra effort. Now, this afternoon, 
After I uh, eat lunch, I'm going to quit for a while. I'm going to set up the boiler and attempt to run this thing uh, under live steam. And then we'll see if it leaks up here around the head. You can't tell when it's when it's air, run on air, but you, you can easily tell because it'll sizzle. And the whole engine's going to get wet and hot when I first introduce steam into it until it uh, comes up to temperature and then it'll run a little bit drier. So it's lunchtime. I think you've all seen my steam boiler before, my copper boiler. And I'm it's already coming up to pressure here, but I, I turned it off momentarily so I could talk about it. I made this quite a while ago. Yeah, you're right. It was when I was in my prime. And I've got a burner here. And it uh, operates off of propane, which I like to keep out of the way, way over here, so I'll, I'll relate that in a minute, but we've got uh, a pressure gauge here and it'll pop off, this is the pop-off valve at 10 pounds, and I don't even need anywhere near 10 pounds, but uh, that's that's what I got it set at. I had to change the spring at one time in order to get that. That came off of an old pressure cooker. A canner, I guess they called them. And there's the plug for filling it. I like to use distilled water. I like to use the Walmart brand, Great Value, because it's even more pure than anyone else's. If you don't believe them, just ask them. And I fill it with a hypo. I found my other little oiler. It was over here with my steam stuff. I noticed that's shorter than the other one. That's, that's my favorite. I wondered what happened to it. I accused my wife of stealing it. So uh, here's the valve. It's got a B on it. I think that stands for Babcock. Now it gets quite hot here in the chimney and I've got a superheater. So you can see that after the steam comes out, it goes back in there and there's a coil and it gets reheated before it comes back out here and then I got a rubber hose which probably isn't the safest thing but I don't run this much and do not let children play around with something like this. And this has been in many of my videos with Jordan. I think you've seen those. And I've got the little engine over here. Notice that it's already getting wet. That boiler dwarfs the engine. So I will fire up the boiler again and uh, get back to you here in a few minutes. She just popped off. wanted you to see that and because the pressure was right around 10 and then it popped off and right now I'm at oh, 7 or 8 or something like that and I attempt to control the pressure with the, the amount of propane the valve on the propane and when I start uh, using the steam here then uh, the pop-off valve should return now you can get a terrible burn you can be scalded so be careful around steam. Now I want to wait for it to get... Uh, see the water coming out of there because it condenses right away on the cold metal. Boy, these... I used one of my wife's bath towels down here, or a hand towel I think she calls them. Again, it'll take just a minute to heat up. Then she's going to run. I'm quite confident. No, I'm down to... Uh, I'm down to zero. I think my flame went out. i got to reignite. I turned it down low, but I guess I turned it too low. Now she's booking on live steam. I can see what looks like a little leak there on the head, so I may have to use some some kind of a gasket compound. See it bubbling around that one screw? 
it's too hot to, to mess trying to uh, tighten it right now so I will not and I'm uh, running oh shoot it's only about three or four pounds of pressure I gotta turn the burner up a little higher but it runs quite well all right make sure that your boiler never runs low on water that's the most dangerous thing about boilers the pressure is coming back up I also noticed that with uh, with my pop-off valve here that it seemed to stick in the open position so I had to wrap it you remember Humphrey Bogart and the African Queen banging on his pop-off valve that runs nice doesn't it real nice but again that steam coming out of the top you know that's the exhaust totally silent too steam is totally silent but the burner is making some noise you can hear the burner and uh, three pounds of pressure is what that is you know steam expands in the cylinders a lot more than compressed air kind of fun to watch you know us grown men are just boys sometimes aren't we so that's it gentlemen it was a long long video I hope you enjoyed it I'll do more this took uh, about six days to make this video and I'm not sure how many minutes of video it'll be yet but I gotta break it up into parts and uh, I'm gonna turn the gas off here momentarily and this is Tubal Cain saying uh, so long for now watch my uh, hundreds of other videos and uh, I'll see you on the next video. So long for now.